times roll, we are doing the taste of New Orleans. Only two desserts. And uh, my name's George Gary, and welcome to my kitchen. And we are cooking away this week because we got locked back down in quarantine. All we can do is go to the doctor. I don't need to go. The grocery store, which I did go there today to pick up some bananas because I had bananas that I bought over the weekend that I thought were going to turn um, better. <laughs> and they're still green. So you want bananas like this to start out. Uh, and you don't want them soft and mushy. But besides teaching here, I uh, do culinary tours. And that is why New Orleans we're talking about today because that was one of the cities I used to take groups a lot. Once a year on Memorial Weekend. And my tours have changed. Do France instead now. New Orleans is the only city that uh, has had three uh, country flags flown over it. The French, the Spanish, and American. And it's a, a remarkable, remarkable city if you've never been to New Orleans. And not just the French Quarter drinking, there's a lot of other things. But before I keep going, let's introduce you to Neil. Neil wants to do Friday's show ahead so he can have the beverages, but this has a lot of alcohol in it. So we're going to talk about... I, I make me sound like a drunk. Well, that's the only time you come out here and, and let everybody see you. I'm not a drunk. I never drink. <laughs> only Friday. Only Friday. Honest. Oh, only, oh, only when, when the, the, the days of the weekends with the letter Y, right? No. So anyway, um, I also have uh, 1415 cookbooks. I say 1415 because I've got one in production that we will do a second volume right after. So that's why. And uh, that comes out in February, made in California, February, March. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, New Orleans, if you haven't been there, when you can go, every weekend is music and food and music and food. And there is a great tour of, um, are you unplugging this? No, your plug, your plug was almost out. I have to watch Neil, because he, okay, so because I'm way over here this time instead of over there. What you have in New Orleans is a lot of food, and there's a great histor historical food tour to take that I suggest everybody go on, unless you're with me on a food tour. We're doing Brennan's. Brennan's is the Brennan family that has probably 20 restaurants all over the place. Uh, Mr. B's is one, uh, the um, place called Brennan's, where they do brunch, and that is a phenomenal southern place that has cloth tablecloths and gloves on the waiters. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to have uh, a southern brunch. And this is one of the items that they do. We start out with vanilla ice cream. I made this myself. Yeah, it's like Martha. I made this ahead, and I put it in uh, balls and put it in the freezer in the so it's ready to go. Because this is going to be hot poured on top of it. So we don't want the ice cream to melt all the way. So that's what we're doing. So now we've got butter, brown sugar, banana liqueur. I don't care what kind you get, but this is the only kind they had at the market. It's called 99 Bananas. Um, 99 brand, whatever that is. So whatever banana liqueur you can get. We've got some vanilla extract, rum, light rum, and we've got some, uh, a little bit of cinnamon. And I will torch this like they do there just if I can. The lighting might be too bright, you won't be able to see it, but anyway. Then we have our bananas. So before you start, take your bananas and we're gonna cut them. I open them up with the peel, just like that. And then I'll cut them into a few pieces. So I've cut them down half and then a few here. And just go straight through and then not through your hand. And then tink, tink, tink. You want them firm, like I said, you don't want them too green and you don't want them uh, mushy. If they're mushy, you're gonna have Bananas Foster Soup. Now this was created by Mr. Brennan for a guest, that a, a local guest that would come in all the time, Mr. Foster. So that's part of our history this week, learning about where foods come from. And bananas are very prevalent there in New Orleans because that's where the boats come in. So, now we're going to heat up our pan with unsalted butter. And when I do a big batch of this, I use a lot of butter. And I get people looking at me like, that's a lot of butter. 
You're walking around in New Orleans. It's Butter hot. Smutter. It's it's yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is it's so hot in New Orleans that you just uh, you sweat it out. Is what you do, and and you sweat everything out there. But it is a you wear cotton, and you don't have to. Uh, I, I say take cotton. Then you don't have to when you put it on iron it because right when you walk out the it's perfect. It's, it's amazing, and uh, we go. We've been to a lot of the plantations, the uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, gardens in New Orleans. So we warm this up until all the butter is bubbling up, and we've got brown sugar. They use a lot of brown sugar down there, and we'll do this until this starts making a slurry. Some of the brown sugar was a little hard. Come to think of it. Well, just like that. Smash that around just so we don't have big chunks of brown sugar in our bananas. And the aroma is so good. It does smell really good. With that's a nice I really packed it in there. There we go. Now we'll put the banana liqueur in. So just like this. I'm just making sure I'm doing it exactly how. Nope. Okay. We still got a few more minutes. We want this to go a few more minutes. I'm using a large, large skillet. Don't use a um, nonstick because you just can't see the bananas very well when you do that. And this doesn't stick. Look at all that butter. Wow. Now we're going to take. Once you put the. Look here in. This is when you worry, not worry. You watch it because that does have alcohol, and this could flame up on you. So you, now you smell all the sugars and the banana. The banana, nana, because it's 99 banana. I think it's 99 proof is what they're getting at. Sometimes you really have to look for the banana liqueur. You have to go to a beverage bevmo store, something like that. So there we go with that. Let that soak in a little bit. And then we will add the vanilla and our bananas. Into this. And uh, a lot of restaurants do this dish table side. I know Trader Vic's and uh, the ones that are left in the Hilton hotels do it. And. Um, there's a few others that do this because it is a nice presentation and it's one of those old-fashioned desserts kind of like crepe Suzette's so we will serve that and we just do it until the bananas are warmed all I have left is rum and cinnamon Let's see. smash those does that look good looks Excellent. Neil, Neil feels like he's in New Orleans. We were there in September last year, and we had probably, well, I posted on Instagram all of the different meals we had, and it looked like that's all you and I did was go restaurant to restaurant. But, you know, we were there, what, five days? That's 15 meals. So it's bubbling away. Now we're going to put our rum in. Neil, I'd go back a little bit just in case this. Keep my eyebrows. Yeah, I want to keep your eyebrows. And let's just see if it'll flame up if it's hot enough. Let's see. This little guy. There we go. Can you turn that light off real quick? Because it's moonlighting, yes. Can, can you turn off the upper? This is just so you guys can see it. See? Oh, yeah, and now that. watch this. When you put cinnamon in, it starts sparking. And that's, that's what cool they do. This. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. You're like a voodoo king. Or something. Oh, and you let that finish. And then it goes off. All righty. So um, you can, that's done. So we're going to take the bananas. Put some of the syrup on top, and I think it's still flaming. 
It might be. Sometimes it does. So you want the syrup. Now this makes four. I'm only making two. <laughs> Let me get some more bananas on this one. And there they are. So there's your bananas foster. And we'll be back to make our pralines next. We'll be right back. How'd you like the bananas foster? Pretty good. You gotta go to Brennan's and have that. It is, uh, you do breakfast at Brennan's uh, brunch and it's part of the package deal and they come to the table side normally. I don't know what's going on today. So anyway, now we're gonna make some pralines and you can go all over the French Quarter and every candy company says they make the best pralines and that they're award winning and how many award winning ones and who gave the award out, you know, but uh, there's some really good ones there. So we're gonna make some pralines, some simple batch, and uh, the key to the whole thing is timing and temperature. So we have brown sugar, dark, and we have granulated sugar. And we have evaporated milk. And we are going to stir that up and did I do it? Yeah, I did half a cup. I'm just looking to make sure. Yeah, okay. And then we're gonna turn this on and this will start cooking away. I use a nice wooden paddle spoon and the sugar will start dissolving. You see some chunks in there that will start dissolving. And we're gonna stir this until it comes to a boil. And you see the granulation, the granulation will stop. I also use a rubber spatula to go around the edges just to make sure I get it all clean while I'm working with it. And we'll just do this and any little chunks of brown sugar. Just smash those down. Then we have butter and we have vanilla, pecans, and I'm using halves, halves. Then I have a large sheet of parchment paper that I will be scooping it. So what it goes, what we do is we stir this occasionally, not all the time, till it comes to a boil. Then we add the butter and the vanilla and the pecans and we stir it just to uh, combine. Then we let it cook until it reaches 238 degrees on an instant read thermometer. Now, if I put this in, it will hit the bottom of the pan. I don't want that. I want to just touch the top part that uh, is uh, measuring the, I have one big chunk of brown sugar. I didn't know I had so many little chunks of brown sugar. And so I want to make sure I get the temperature of the mixture, not the temperature of the bottom of the pan. And, uh, oh, I need a cup of pecans. Just using the same, I think it's about the rest of this. If I used a cup before, yeah, there we go. There's a lay a little bit left, so I'll use the whole thing. And it's great when you go past the candy kitchens that are making the mixture up and you smell the sweetness and they have a graininess to them. They aren't, uh, there is one, it's called in the French market. They have um, a chewy variety, more like caramel, but the typical one is very grainy and dusty when you break it. And if you try to save them and take them home, you're gonna um, not get them home. So what you do is you order them online. So as soon as this comes to boil, we'll add everything else in. And then we will wait until it hits 238 degrees. That's the hardest part is having to wait so long, but it's starting to boil right now. And then we will Add our butter. That butter will melt right away. We have our vanilla. Our butter, the 
that's alcohol, so it'll steam a little bit. And we're going to put our pecans. I'm just going to use that last little bit of pecans. Never hurts to have all of it. Stir that. Now, right now, it looks like a caramel sauce, doesn't it? For it does. on top of a sundae. See that butter? It's going to take a sec to melt it. But just so you can see, I'll clean the edges. I'm not going to really disturb it right now. I'm going to let it sit here and cook. But I'm going to look just to look at the temperature. If you do not have a thermometer, you've probably seen over the past couple months of I'm doing these shows, I use it a lot. Check uh, the chicken from the other day, and right now we're at 202 degrees, and it's going up. So 238 is what we want it at. I'll stir it up a little bit more. And once I hit 238, I will take it off the heat and let it cool five minutes. I'll put a timer on. You don't touch it for the five minutes. And then you're gonna beat it with this wooden spoon until it starts to thicken for about five minutes. When you go into the quarter and you watch people making these, they are doing them over big copper kettles. Okay, we're at 210. Let's see, I'm just hitting the... And they do have, and I, I have a thermometer where it will beep at that exact temperature of 238. I'm at 220. Now it's going down a little bit. Sometimes I go up and down. But you don't want to disturb it. When you stir it, it will lose heat. Almost at 230. Oh, the aroma smells good, doesn't it? It does smell I'm thinking I'm in New Orleans. We were in New Orleans for uh, Labor Day. Jello shot. <laughs> you didn't have any jello shots in New Orleans? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Oh. We had some good food that week. We did. We went to a nice restaurant every single night. I missed that. The dinners? Yeah. <clears throat> It went down to 230. I'm going to stir it just to make sure I'm not sticking anything. Nothing sticking. We're doing good. Just to make sure it's all even. I love the aroma of sugars. Now, if you don't hit 238 and you decide, oh, I think I'll do it anyway, these aren't going to firm up. So you really have to make sure you wait. And because I stirred, it went back to 210. So it lost 20 degrees. So, which is fine. I'm not gonna stir anymore. I'm gonna let it go all the way to 238, then I'll take it off the heat. You wanna do a close up of what it looks like. We're at 230. And then we will be back after 238 in five minutes okay okay so this is what it looks like after five minutes of sitting it just looks like a sauce and i'm going to stir this for five minutes i'm going to keep doing this and you're going to see the change it starts cooling down and gets grainy a little bit which is fine you'll start seeing the nuts instead of slurryish looking they'll get drier so I've got the timer on. Make sure you do those timers because if you don't, you're gonna adjust and think that it's done when it's really not. So make so, sure you use a heavy, heavy pan also. But see the coloring is changing? Are you putting air into the I'm sugar? just cooling it really. Cool. Air does go into it, but not a whole lot. Not like ice creams or, or frostings, but you can start seeing the nuts are thickening up a little bit in the mixture. And when I do this, I've got to get that rubber spatula and go around the edge. And this is very hot. This is at least 220 degrees. See how it's grainy it's looking now? Which is fine. See how it's not as liquefied? 
Do you under, does it seem that way to you, Neil? It does, camera? absolutely, okay. yeah. Okay. I thought you were waiting for the audience to respond. <laughs> no, I was, you are the audience, I'm Neil. the audience. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, just like that. See? Wow. Can... Really thick. Yep. And then, I'm going to clean this up, just making sure I get all the edges. Okay. And then I'm going to start putting it, scoops of it. These are large ones. Those are big ones. I'll go a little smaller. And they will fall flatter. And see, a little pecan, whoop, there we go. Now they're doing this in weather that is so hot. Hot and humid. And humid. But it doesn't matter. They, they want love their, their problems. Yep, I mean, these are double the size coming like that because I should get 18. And the last one is kind of hard to get because it's dry. So you kind of have to hurry and do that. And it is hot, like I said. So what I do is I'll take a wet spatula, just so it's wet, and press it down. Try to keep, and they're very hot, so you don't want to use your hand to do that. And there is our pralines. So we will be back when they're cool. Oh, that's hot. Whew. I have asbestos hands, but not 200 degrees. And there is our pralines. So we'll be back. See you in a minute. So, before it melts. Mm. I feel like I'm in New Orleans. We have our pralines and our bananas foster. We hope to see you tomorrow when we talk about the history of brownies. We're doing two brownies tomorrow and you won't want to mix it. Mix it. I only have one bite. Miss it. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>